Hey everybody, we're just waiting to get started here. It's uh, maybe two minutes to six o'clock, <coughs> just waiting to get your viewers in. But I am truly, truly, truly excited about this second show, uh, podcast that we're, uh, that we're releasing on today. And I think it's a very, very interesting topic. So um, just hold on, hold on for a minute, let's get everything going and let's get everything, uh, make sure we got everything right here. Just give me one moment. So, welcome to Healthy Talks with my health care lady, Letitia Jackson, where we promote being healthy, happy, and insured through conversation. And this podcast is to bridge the gap between entrepreneurs and career-driven professionals with the importance of maintaining a healthy lifestyle through their spiritual, physical, mental, and financial experiences. And so, <laughs> I want to say, I want to thank you all for tuning in. And uh, just being a part of our second podcast, I cannot thank you enough. And before we get started, I want you to go, if you haven't already, go to our Facebook page and like Healthy Talks with My Hair Care Lady. You can also go to our Instagram page at Healthy Talks Podcast. Um, you can find us on Spotify, Healthy Talks with My Hair Care Lady Podcast. And also, too, we had a little issue with Apple Podcasts last week, but we're currently working on that. And we got some new... Um, social media that we're working on, like the YouTube and channel. So all that is coming. So, but I'm just really excited for what we're doing right now, what we have. So, um, you all have this very handsome gentleman sitting across from me today. Well, and so, <laughs> so just really, really excited about what we're going to talk about today. So I'm going to read this post here. Okay. The post says, is a healthy marriage attainable when you both are working together in the same environment day in and day out, not only do you work together, you are also building a ministry together as well. So that means you are with each other 24 hours a day, seven days a week, at home, at work, and at church. Your friends are his friends, his friends are your friends, and you are also around each other's family members daily. Do you think this is too much? Do you think this is overkill? And do you even think it's possible to maintain? So, uh, it's a very, very interesting topic because you all, this is us. Um, so I thought it would be great just to have my husband here with us to kind of talk about that. But before we do, I want him to introduce himself, tell him, tell you more about himself. Hello, hello everyone. My name is Darnell Jackson. I am a insurance broker agent here at Jackson Insurance Group. Um, also, I am the husband of one wife. <laughs> is that how I said it? I said yes. it right. Yeah, you said it right. <laughs> um, Ms. Leticia Jackson. Also, um, I am the pastor of New Life Apostolic Church, West Tupelo. Um, Zero, uh, let me say like this, 4008 West Tupelo, Mississippi. Um, so we're just here to currently kind of talk about whatever my wife wants to talk about <laughs> on the day. We're going to be a little transparent <laughs> on today, but we're going to tell everything. <laughs> so uh, just to get started, for people to kind of know us. So, you know, my husband and I, we are business partners uh, here at Jackson Insurance Group. So we work together every day. Every Monday day. through Friday from 8 o'clock to 5 o'clock. We are here every day with each other. Not only that, uh, our ministry is almost a year and a half. Two um, years. Two, almost two years. Two years. Two years. Two, two years. years. And so we have started a church together. So you can only imagine what that's like. And then not only that, we actually go home together as well. So we're pretty much together 24-7 minus a couple of things here and there. And so the question is... Is having a healthy marriage attainable when you're around each other that much? When you are my friend, when you are my husband, when you are my business partner, 
when you are my pastor? Like, is that too much to handle? People ask, how do y'all get along so much? Like, how can y'all do that? Because people say, I can't work with my spouse. And they, they'll drive me crazy. So, is it attainable? And if, if so, tell me, how did we get to this point? Um, I'm going to say this. It depends. I think it depends on the couples. The, the You know, um, <laughs> you know, not to laugh, but uh, we <laughs> understand in the pandemic, uh, the divorce rate went up because couples found out they couldn't live together, um, being around each other all that time. Um, so for me, it depends on, it, I think it depends on the couple. You have to know the dynamics of your marriage and you have to know the dynamics of your relationship. Um, you know, um, it works for us. Uh, it wasn't always that way. Let's talk about that. It wasn't always that way. <laughs> Let's talk about that. It wasn't always that way. So can you elaborate? I'm going to follow you once you elaborate. Okay. Um, you know, um, for some may know, I left my job of where I had been for 15 years. Um, and I was a supervisor. And I decided to make a career change and get into the insurance business. Um, and with doing that... Um, I, I came in um, not knowing a lot, um, had had did insurance before, but actually had allowed my license to lapse. So I had to go back and get my license again. But for me to make the change of, of being uh, in a nine to five in that type of environment, I wanted to be in a, a nine to five where was, I was in a controlled atmosphere where I controlled my own destiny. But with that being said, I left my job and said, well, hey, I told my wife, I'm going to come help you <laughs> um, be, you know, build Jackson Insurance Group, um, you know, that nature. And, you know, once I done that, <laughs> it was good at first. <laughs> yes, at first. But to so okay. all you fellas, um, have to, having to succumb to the will of of your wife <laughs> it's hard sometimes <laughs> it's hard sometimes so I mean but what do you mean like it worked out at first what happened well, well you know at first it worked out because you know um, just the every the every day of you need to help things we could do we were in the car together, you know, we spent all this time that we normally didn't get. And, you know, and it was good. We riding, we, we going door to door, neighborhood to neighborhood, community to community. We're getting out walking and we're passing out flyers and we're trying to, you know, uh, grow this thing. And we're doing all this stuff together. But there comes a time where, you know, my wife, she was, um, she was more seasoned than I was in the business and now she's beginning to step in a role to where she's becoming, you know, this boss lady. <laughs> I am a boss lady. Let's okay. get that right. <laughs> this boss lady. Okay. And as a man, you know, you like now she's trying to give giving me commands and telling me, well you gotta do this. And I'm like, wait a minute. I ain't gotta listen to you. <laughs> I'm you know like hold up, you know. But um through much prayer, <laughs> uh, to get where we needed to go, I had to succumb and recognize and respect the knowledge that she had in this business in order to uh, make this thing, you know, come to pass. I'm going to start right there. So you heard he said he had to stop and to humble himself. And, and <laughs> It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. He had to stop and humble himself because he realized where I was in the business and he had to get to that point. So fellas, it's nothing wrong for stepping back and letting your spouse take the role in something that she is good at. Cause in order to become a, be a team member, in order to grow together, you have a lot of that person to take the role who knows what they're doing. So you can learn and grow from that. But now it's not like that now. It's totally different now. No, it's not. It's definitely <laughs> not like that now because for me, um, and I, I'll tell people this, my passion is ministry. Mm -hmm. So 
I'm a pastor first, and then I'm an insurance agent. My pastor, my role as being a pastor is 24-7. Um, so, but as being a man, I still have to provide. Your first ministry is your household. So you have to be able to provide and help provide. So, um, but I had to understand too, in order for us to make this thing work, okay, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do what I need to do and I'm gonna push you and I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna listen and I'm gonna ex uh I'm gonna realize that you have more knowledge than me. And sometimes it's me and we feel like we're coming down, uh, but really we we make it's trying to make a come up. And you got to understand it. You know, you got to, you know, as they say, game recognize game. <laughs> you got to know, um, you got to know how to make adjustments in your marriage for the betterment of the household. And I think every man and woman should do that. If you want to be successful, you got to make those adjustments. You got to move yourself out the way and, do, and do what's best. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm going to leave it right there since he had it on a good ending note. So I'm not going to drill him too hard on that part Ooh. there. <laughs> okay. <coughs> so the next question is now, all right, so now we build a business together. How can we maintain seeing each other every day? People wonder, how can you work together? How can you get along together? What all do you have to talk about when you're working in the same environment every day? How is that even possible? Well, you know, when you're working, you're working. <laughs> right. And when you're at home, you're at home. Um, I think we have done a great job with finding balance. Um, there are times when we do take the work home and we are discussing, well, what can we do to make things better for employees or what can we do to uh, build the business um, better or go, go higher? And um, you have to find that balance. You know, there's days when I say, hey, you know, let's cut it off. Um, let's talk about me and you versus Jackson <laughs> Insurance Group. Or, you know, and you just got to find balance. You got to find that balance. Um, there's days when, you know, as a, as a woman, she need a break. Um, and as a man, I need a break. So, you, you, you know, I have other friends that I associate myself with. Um, she has other, you know, female friends that she associate herself with, you know, so we, we, we get that balance in our lives and we, we've been doing good so far, so far, so far <laughs> to be able to create, you know, create that balance for ourselves. I want to go back and reiterate something. <coughs> okay, ladies. So now <coughs> let me tell you one mistake I made as a woman and I don't want you to, to make a mistake I made is that although I was very knowledgeable in the business, my husband actually had some great ideas that we thought he thought we should do. But because I thought I was more knowledgeable, I did not value his opinion. Yeah. I did not take what he had to say very seriously. And that's a mistake I made. But you know what? Once we got on the same page, because I realized what role he played in the business, and he knew what role I played in the business. And because we understood each other at that point when we seen our business grow, but not only that, our marriage also, we became closer and closer together because we understood each other. We understood each other's role. Like, for example, uh, Darnell, he may, he may go to the gym, play, play, play basketball. And yes, I do play basketball. <laughs> And so you know, at first I would get kind of irritated because I'm like, you gone all the time, you know, and I'm still at home, I'm working, I'm cooking and take care of the kids and all that. But I had to understand that was his downtime to get himself right, his downtime to get some me time in. And so I had to learn how to get me some me time in as well, because for me, it was always work, 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 home, 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 the children, the family. And I never developed a downtime for myself. And so once he got me to realize you need downtime too to take care of yourself, to have some self-care in there. Cause that is real. That's real. Married couples need self-care as well. You do. really do. It, whether it's 30 minutes or an hour, you know, it's fine that time. And so when I found something that I like to do outside of me and him, and things became a lot better um, with that. So definitely. And uh, also too, he mentioned we do have our friends. So here's the thing about that. I have my friends, don't ever have his friends as well, but we are aware of each other's friends. Exactly. And what I mean by that is, he know who my friends are, I know who his friends is. And so, and their, our friends know who we are. Exactly. And so, our, our circle of friends are people who want to see us make it. 
people who want to uh, see you prosper. And so that's very important in a marriage as well, because let's say if you're going through something and you want to go speak to a friend about, you know, some advice or just want to vent some, you want that circle to be someone who's going to lift you, who's going to empower you and see you to the right direction. So I don't think we have any friends at all that's, that's, that's not for us. I echoes on that. Yeah. I mean, um, I, I, you know, hey, if you don't like my wife, then you don't like me. Exactly, we, we got a problem. You know, that's just it. You don't <laughs> like my problem. wife. You don't like me. You don't love my wife. You don't love me. That's just how it is. And you, you know, you're not my friend. Now we still can associate because I understand. You know, people associate all the time. They don't have the best um, chemistry together, but. Uh, I have some real friends, some guys that I know that are in the trenches with me, some guys I know that, you know, um, they, you know, they love my wife, uh, and, uh, vice versa. You know, she got some, some, she got some ladies in her corner that are in the trenches with her and we got love for one another. And that's the whole key, you know, and a lot of times people don't understand that there are times when you have to find those people um, that are that are there to push you, to help you, to see that you grow, to see that your well-being is good. And sometimes when you find those people, you'll find your circle. You'll find your circle maybe getting a little smaller. Exactly. Or it could maybe grow a little bigger. But you have to do what's best for you, and you have to do what's best for your marriage. Hey Amen. I love that answer, babe. Thank you. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna find it. <laughs> So you all, uh, so August, we'll be married 10 years, 10 so we're years. celebrating that, and we're really excited about that, and so in those 10 years, you know, I hear people say they have family members that they cannot get along with, oh, yeah. okay, and so for <coughs> us, <laughs> <laughs> so for <clears throat> us, like my mom works for, worked in the office with us Monday through Friday, okay, mm -hmm. and then uh, my mother-in-law, she's at our home Monday through Wednesday, at our home, and then not only that, we see them on Wednesday night at Bible class, and also we see them on Sunday morning. So the question is, how can you deal with your in-laws? How, why is it that that we can get so along with our in-laws, uh, simply around them all the time? Well, one of the answers is um, we have God in our family, Amen. And God is love, and you know. You know, I, I thank God for that. It's just a blessing um, that, you know, I don't have an issue with my in-laws. I love them. I, I feel like they love me. Um, you know, and that's just a wonderful thing. Um, so that's how we're able to to get along. Now, they are our mothers. <laughs> and, you know, they, uh, my father-in-law is my father-in-law. And, and, and uh, my stepfather, he is my father. Um, so to them, you know, we're just their kids and you know, they still kind of, you know, boss us around a little bit and, you know, <laughs> who tells their mama no. So, you know, um, so we, you know, we, I'm, I'm happy on that situation. Um, my mother has love for my, my wife, um, is Jean with love. Uh, and you know, that's a good thing. That's part of that circle. Right. That's part of having that inner circle. You want people that's going to be in the trenches with you. Um, you know, and just to tell a little bit about this, there was times when we were in some bad financial situations and our parents was there for us. Um, there were times when before we got to the level we are, you know, we had an issue buying Christmas. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and as a man, think about how, you know, that made me feel. Um, but our, our my mother-in-law and my father-in-law were there for us to help us, you know, with our, our, our kids on Christmas to make sure they had a good a good time. Right. So when you have people like that in your corner, um, you want to entrust yourself around people like that, people that's going to love you when you're down, people that's, you know, not there when you up in your up days or your, your you, when you reach that next level. You want those people that, are, that have been with you in the trenches. I keep saying that because it's like a war sometimes. So you want those people that have been there with you in the trenches. And I will say this too. So our family, we always have shown love toward one another. But I will say this though. There have been times where we have bumped heads, okay? So we don't want to paint this just glam picture yes, of all this. It's been all glory. It's been all peaches and creams. There's been times where my mama and my mother-in-law have gotten on our nerves. I'm going yep, to say yep, it. They, do. they have said things that made us upset, but it was all out of love. Like Darnell said, they care for you, so they treat you like you're still, you know, 
little kids, you know. But you got to have an open communication is where I want to say that. Yeah. Have an open communication. So some of you who might not have the best chemistry with your in-laws, have an open communication. Definitely. And think about where they're coming from. They're coming out of love. But also, too, there has to be boundary set. Yeah. And it's nothing wrong with saying, hey, mom, you know, hey, this is how we are. It's how we want things done in our home. And then they're going to respect it. They may not like it, okay, because I'm the mama. You know, you don't tell me what yes, to do. Yes, you have but, to tell them. But they don't. <laughs> <laughs> this is our kids. And these are my kids. We raising them. You are not raising right, them. Right, right. So when they come over your house, you let them have everything and do and then Okay, I'm going off. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but again, it's it's all out of love. And so I would say have an open communication with them and just set your boundaries. And at some point, they will respect you where they are and you're going to respect them where they are again. Because remember, you you my kids too. And so you know how you want the best for your children now. And no matter how old they get, you will always want the best for them. Definitely. And so it's the same thing for them. They want the best for us. And so they're going to always chime in and have their two cents. The we're going to... Also, then we're going to come together mm -hmm. and we're going to discuss what we think is best. So we will listen to what they have to say. But as a husband and wife, you cleave to your, your husband, you yes. cleave to your wife. And we come on, we, we come together and be on one page. One Most accord. definitely. Let's talk about that. Being on one accord. Let's talk about that. What difference did it make in our marriage when we was fighting against one another and then we came on one accord? It made a big difference. It made a difference. Um... In our marriage, uh, in our home, and it made a difference um, <laughs> in our bank account. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> uh, when we got on the same page and we kind of figured out what we're going to be doing, we stopped letting people kind of entertain yes. and tell us we should be doing this and we should be doing that. Um, and we kind of got in our lane. Mm -hmm. And once we got in our lane, oh my God, it was like there was no limit to what, you know, what could happen. And we understood, you know, re we respected what each one brought to the table. And, you know, when you can get that going, when you and your spouse can get on the same page, remember, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to let my little pastor come on here. <laughs> remember, it's the enemy's job to divide and conquer. Mm -hmm. um, um, when you become, you are to become one. Um, as God, as the word say, you are to cleave to your wife and the two flesh should become one. And of course, the enemy doesn't want you to come one. But once you become one, he knows it's a problem. And so when we became, we got on the same page with our business and what we were trying to do. And we just kind of just flew and doors just begin to open. I mean, doors that we, you know, we would try to get in. It just, people would just, hey. Come on in. They would come and invite us to the table. Um, and that's what can happen when you become one. I totally agree with that. Um, so it was like, you know what? And we say fighting against each other. We don't mean actually physically Physical, fighting. Yeah. Just that, you know, Darnell had his direction. He wanted to go in. And I had my direction. I wanted to go in. And we were both right in our own right. We were both right on what we are going to do. But we had to come together and, and come up with a plan. Come up with a plan. To where we both had to compromise on some things, but we also both got some things we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And when we came together as one, like you said, so many doors began to open. One door was the birth of, of, of our church. Definitely. You know? Definitely. Because, see, the thing was, like you said, mentioned earlier, he wanted to come off his job. And so, but the whole goal was come off his job so that one day he could be full-time pastor, okay? And so, when we came together and got on one accord and when he, you know, the business took off. Because my thing was the business was the vehicle to help us get to this next level. We got on one accord, the business took off, the business grew within three years. I mean, it just, it took off rapidly. Um, and then, once that happened, the Lord said, Darnell, it's time to move. It's time to go and start your ministry. And so, in the middle of the pandemic, and you all know churches were shutting down. In the yes. Pandemic. It was, they were shutting down. People were not having services. And here we are. God said move in the pandemic to where our church was birthed in the pandemic. In the pandemic. So, that's how God moved when you get on one accord. And so, I'm, I'm going to let you talk about the, the move of the church and, and what it meant for us and, and how did that take off for us? How did that grow? What did God do for us in that? Well... Um, as, as she was saying, um, 
you know, it's kind of like somewhat similar to the story of how um, God had been dealing with Abraham. And I have been dealing with this issue. And I tell, you know, as far as any um, pastor or minister would know, um, if you desire to do an office of a bishop, which is a pastor, you desire good work. And it was kind of in my heart to do the work. Um, but for me, I think what was happening, God was aligning everything up. And I tell people all the time, uh, my household is my first ministry. And I don't think anyone could start anything as far as being a pastor and your household is kind of tore up. Amen. So I'm not saying we were just in a wreck or, you know, <laughs> thing, but we had to get some things in place. And once, we, like you said, once we get, once, like she said, once we get on the same page, things just begin to happen. Um, the way became easier, you know, and I say every day has been a, what we call peaches and cream, but is the it's been an easier way you know we still face difficulties we still go through things but with all being said um that that thing that was in us has been birthed out and has come to pass so um it, it's just a blessing you know it's a blessing it's a huge blessing and so we go back to the question is a healthy marriage attainable definitely <laughs> you gotta work on this thing man uh you know um I was told, you know, by, and I don't like to say former pastor, but uh, my, my pastor, um, I still consider him my pastor, Bishop Lee Dentry Foster. And, you know, shout out to uh, Bishop Lee Dentry Foster and, and uh, Mother Foster. You know, um, I was told every day you got to work on your marriage, you know, mm -hmm. and that is a true statement. That's true. You have to work on your marriage every day. Every day um, you got to work to make it better, you know. Um, you know, fellas, let me say this. <laughs> Even if she wrong, <laughs> do all you can in your power <laughs> to make it right as being a man. Okay. Because it is a true statement. And y'all listen to me. If she ain't happy, the whole house ain't happy. <laughs> so, and I believe that. And I was told that. Um, and that's just like an old an old proverb or whatever. But um, do all you can to make it right. You know, make it right and make it um, right in, in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to chime in on that as well. Come so on. I hear what you're saying, you know, to make it right. But also, ladies, we know what we're doing. We know what it takes to make him mad. We know what it takes to get under his skin. We know when he's on the rooftop and we keep going and going and going. But guess what, though? We're losing the battle because now our house has been divided. That's right. Once again. So there's no reason why you want to give negative energy to one That's another. Right. Talk to you me. want a brother, though. You have to have an open line of communication. I want to say ten, almost 10 years now, you would think we know everything about each other. But we don't. We don't. We are still learning each other every day. Something new that we did not know about each other. Some of that was called because it was, you know how you still not comfortable sharing everything because you don't want to be judged. You don't want that person to look at you anything any different than what they have before. And so we're still learning each other. So we're growing closer and closer together every day. And so I am very thankful for that. Having a line of open communication and being honest with one another and also too ladies and fellas we change our okay. mindset change Woo. our needs change emotions. what we want emotions we, we, we make a change and so when we're changing we have to adapt to one another we have to know what that change is why that change is going forward and to come together to make it work again you have to come together you will compromise on some things but for the most part, though, you want to see each other happy. You want each other to, to be in their own way, doing their own thing, being happy, but coming together and being one. Definitely. Most definitely. Definitely come together, be one. Um, you know, fellas, you got to know that uh, we are constantly evolving on both sides, <laughs> especially with uh, women sometimes. There's so many changes they go through within their bodies, within their minds. And, you know, we married that person for better or worse, you know, in sickness and health. And, um, you know, and those are the things that we go back. We stood before God 
and a whole bunch of people, some we knew, <laughs> some we didn't know, and we declared all these vows. And so it's 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 each person's uh each, each person is obligated to hold true to your vows. Even if you have to go to to someone and say, Hey man, you know, it's all right to talk. It's all right to talk to people you can trust. Exactly. Not everybody, exactly. but people you can trust about your marriage. You know, it's mm -hmm. all right to go to a a pastor or a good friend who you can trust and say, hey, you know, me and my wife, we're dealing with this. Or the same way, ladies, it's all right to go to a, a, a woman that you can trust, somebody you can trust and say, me and my husband are dealing with this. Because at the end of the day, you want to make it right and you want to make it better. Hey, man, it's someone you can trust. Someone you can trust. So, ladies, this is what I'm going to say. If you're married and you're going through some issues with your spouse, go to someone who you can trust who's also married. Yes. I mean, don't get me wrong. I have single friends who can give me some great advice. I really do. And, and, and I, I take that at heart. But your friends is not going to understand what you're going through because they're not in this situation. They're not married just yet. Okay? So, but I'm not saying to disrespect them. I'm just saying just... Take some take wise counseling is what I'm saying. Definitely. Definitely take wise counseling. Uh, if anything, you should be encouraging your single friend that they can get married. You should encourage them some things that you have encountered and how, how they can overcome. So you should be encouraging to that single friend versus some friends don't want to be married because you told them all your garbage and what's going on in your marriage to where you deteriorate and you don't even want to be in a relationship. And so the question is, is a healthy marriage attainable when you can work together? Definitely. When you go to church together, Ooh. be my pastor. Yes. Um, when we at home, and the answer is yes because first thing we have love. Okay, love is the first thing, and the second thing is being on the same page, putting your blinders on, mm. and you do what's best for you two. Definitely. No matter what the Joneses is doing, mm -hmm. no matter what they got, no matter how they got it, you put yourself together in position and you link up together because oh. you're stronger together don't let no man not one thing not one child divide you between you and your spouse and watch how god blesses you watch how you take off watch how things just blossom for you in your match not only that the things around you as well is going to change because you are the change you made the change you set the environment high Definitely. So that's all I have. Uh, you have anything else you want to share? No, I, I don't have. I have nothing else. Do we have some questions or? Do we have any questions here? Okay, come on with the questions, cause everybody was like. All right. Yeah, anybody have any questions? Come on, hit us with them real quick, real quick. So while we're waiting, can you go ahead and give our church a shout out where they can come and service time? <laughs> For church? Oh yeah. Um, we are having. Our first, well, this will be our second Easter program, mm -hmm. but um, our youth um, pastor will be in charge, uh, uh, Elder Al Stevens. Shout out to him and his wife, Sister Morgan. Um, so we asking everyone to come and be with us at 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. Now, let me say this. You get there at 1045, you're going to miss it. miss it. We might be walking around church. <laughs> So I'm letting you know, be here at 10, and we're going to have a good time. Uh, we are at 4008 West Main Street, Tupelo, Mississippi, um, and we are on the side of the building. We do have uh, space and capacity to hold some more people, uh, but you want to get there um, early to get good seating. So uh, with that being said, we hope to see someone out this week. All right, you all. Thank you for tuning in again. If you have not already, go to no, no questions here. Go to our Facebook page at Healthy Talks with My Hair Lady. Go like that. Go on our Instagram page, Healthy Talks with My Hair Care Lady. Also, too, we're on Spotify, uh, Healthy Talks with My Hair Lady podcast. Go there and like it. And once we get our YouTube up and our Apple podcast up, we will share those links with you. Again, I truly love you all. You are my healthy loves. Y'all have a great day. Bye. God bless you.